Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today is part two of my mild restoration on this 69 F350. I've already got most of the work done, so let's go get you guys caught up. Well, hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I got my 69 F350 back from paint. If you remember this truck, I got it a while back. It had a yellow bed on it. Uh, if you missed that uh, episode of this truck, if you're wondering when, when I got this truck, I'll have a link in the description below of uh, when going and picking up this truck. Uh, and uh, when I got it and going over the truck, I'll have all the associated videos of this truck in the link in the description below if you wanna get more content on it. But uh, I went to paint shop because it had some dings right here. The previous owner had put a box bed on this truck, a yellow one, and uh, this is the F350, so it has a uh, 135 wheelbase, and uh, the regular trucks are 133. So uh, this truck is a little bit longer because it's a one ton, so that box bed didn't fit exactly right. I took it off, and uh, I have since sold that bed, but uh, he left dings right here on the cab and on the other side from that bed hitting it because he wasn't real careful. So I had those fixed, uh, resprayed the back end. There's also some dents up here that were from something along the, uh, the life of the truck. We had those knocked out and uh, repainted the back of the cab. It turned out really nice, uh, really slick, uh, nice paint job on here and did a real good job cleaning up these dents. You can't even tell anything was there. Uh, this truck's real nice, original truck. I got this Napa Hide bed. Uh, pretty cool. I have the duals off of it, by the way. It does have dual wheels. I have the duals off of it. Uh, I'll show you those in a minute. Uh, but I'm sa I sandblasted them. We're going to get them painted. So uh, that's why I have those things off right now. But I have this Napa Hide bed on here. I thought it fit the truck. You know, wood floor. Kind of a vintage style flatbed. And it was the right size runners. I just have it setting on there right now. Uh, these, these old trucks have a hump right here over the axle. Even the cabin chassis one tons, uh, the new modern stuff just has a straight frame on the back, but these old ones still have that hump on there and it makes it more difficult putting a flatbed on it. But uh, a two by four uh, works perfectly for, for raising it up over that hump. So I bolted some two by fours on the back and on the front where it's flat so that bed can rest on it. And it has that uh, rail right there to support all the weight on the bed. So uh, it's uh, putting pressure on the bed on where those where those two by fours are and allows it to have a little bit of movement. I still have to mount it, mount it up. These straps here, I'll have to, they have spacers on them for because it was put on a 37 inch frame. So I have to take those spacers off and then I'll bolt the bed on so it can be taken off easily and not welded on. A lot of times stuff's welded on, but on these old trucks, I'd like to see it bolted on because if you take it off to do a, a frame restoration or something like that, you don't have to cut welds and stuff. See right here, you can see a, a strap that was welded on previously from a, a previous installation. Somebody just cut it, but it was just, a, they just put a strap right there and welded it down. But anyway, here's, an, here's a shot of the back of the cab there. Nice new paint on the back of the cab, no rust in this truck. It's absolutely perfect. But uh, here's the shot of the other side. There was a few dents right here as well. I'll put some pictures on when I'm talking about it, but the bed's not all the way forward. I just have it sitting on there. I haven't done anything as far as mounting the bed. It's just sitting on there to see how everything was gonna line up. We uh, we touched up a little bit on the glove box here. It had some uh, dings and stuff from looks like something hit hit it or sitting in here was hitting it. Uh, just some dings and stuff in the paint. We got that painted over. I have a new uh, the last episode on this truck. We did a uh, dash pad, dyed a dash pad. I didn't put it in there because we put in a uh, a new windshield, a new windshield gasket. So I had to put that dash pad in there and uh, generally just do some cleaning, and uh, it'll be ready to go. The the wheels, I think I'm going to go white on the duels. Kind of had gone back and forth. These gray ones, I think, actually look pretty nice. But, uh, you know, the gray color, not the single. They stick way too far out because they're single wheels. But I thought about painting them gray. I also thought about painting them black. But uh, I think I think with the black, I was worried about being too much white because it has this white painted grill. And if you have white wheels, it's just going to be a lot of white. But I think the black bed in the back kind of breaks that up. So I think it'll turn out all right being white. The engine is uh, all cleaned up and looking really nice. 
I uh, I went back and forth. See right here, this inner fender, the paint's kind of uh, coming off of it, and as well as the core support here. This one's pretty pretty decent. There's good black paint on that, but uh, I kind of decided just to leave it as is because it's nice, original. Uh, it's honest, is what I call it. You know, if you start uh, you start painting that, it's it's obvious that it's been worked on, and I think a real nice feature of this truck is how nice and original and clean it is, and. Uh, I mean, it probably bring more money if I took all this apart and painted it. But for me, I just really appreciate a honest low mile, you know, real good condition truck. And uh, that's what this truck is. So I'm just going to leave it. And uh, the next owner can do that if they wish. But uh, for me, I think I just like leaving it like this because it just shows how nice and honest this truck is. Shot of the interior here. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Let's go up and look at those wheels. Uh, I'm just, I'm just sandblasting them. I got to take them to the uh, paint guy so he can paint with the same paint we did on the truck. We're gonna match the truck, Wimbledon white. Oh, that's another thing. I forgot to tell you, we had problems with this truck when it was in paint. That's one reason why it took so long. Uh, here on the door tag, the warranty tag, paint code is C which C comes back as pure white. Makes sense, because it's white, right? So I told him it's it's C, it's pure white. Go ahead and get paint ordered and I'll bring it in. Well, we got it here and he, he actually uh, fixed the dents and painted the back of the cab and it didn't match. I'll, I'll have a picture here showing you the, the paint not matching, but uh, it didn't match. And turns out this is Wimbledon white, which uh, I guess uh, should have paid more attention because Wimbledon white's a little bit more off-colored. But uh, we painted the back of the cab and it didn't end up matching, so we had to buy more paint and end up repainting it again. But what is interesting is the inside of the cab is Wimbledon white as well, because we, you know, we painted in there, and the door tags is pure white. And I don't, I know the exterior has been repainted before, so that didn't, you know, that didn't throw up any red flags. But the inside has not been repainted that I can tell in any form or fashion, and uh, it's Wimbledon white as well. So if you were going to do a color change on this. You, you would see some paint. I mean, unless you took everything apart, like you're doing a frame-off restoration, you would see some paint color. But everything's Wimbledon white in this cab. So I, it's it's a sure a head-scratcher for me because the door tag is uh, pure white and everything is Wimbledon white if they just painted it the wrong color or what was going on there. But uh, anyway, I just thought that was odd and kind of annoying when you're doing, uh, doing paint work that the door tag wasn't the right color. But... That just kind of goes to show you should always check it before you uh, order paint and start spraying paint. And uh, we're going to do that on this uh, uh, Harbor Blue truck. I'm not sure that actually matches as well. Uh, so we're going to definitely going to check that before we do that. Because if it doesn't match, I want to do the whole thing. So anyway, I'm going to show you these wheels I have mounted off. I have some tires for them as well, some new tires. And uh, we're going to get these things dropped off at paint today, hopefully. Here's these wheels. Ugh. Have them all sandblasted down. These are actually, some of them are Firestone. This one's Firestone, that one's Firestone. And there's a couple of them that are different, but they're Ford wheels. They say they have Ford stamped in them and they have Firestone stamped in them. So they're Firestone wheels. But uh, we're going to get that to paint and uh, get that back, and we'll start assembling the truck. Well, I got the wheels dropped off at the painters. He's going to get them painted up and have the truck pulled in the shop here. I have the uh, mounting straps pulled off of the bed. I thought they just had spacers on them, but uh, these spacers are welded to these straps. I'm still going to utilize these straps because uh, they, uh, they do a good job, So, and I don't want to have to make a bunch of new ones. So I'm just going to cut the uh, the tabs off of here and grind the weld down and uh, we'll get them out in the bed. I already have one of them over here cut off using the vertical band saw here. I already have one of them cut off there. Got a little bit of weld to grind down. But uh, <clears throat> I'm going to get going on these and then we'll get that bed mounted up. Well, I got all the uh, brackets ready to go. I'm going to mount them... Uh, this one leaning back, this one leaning forward, and uh, the back one on the back is going to be leaning forward. But uh, going to have them in opposing directions so that uh, the bed 
uh, can't move any. If you had them all go in the same direction and you pull on the bed, the bed could lift up and go backwards or vice versa, go forward into the cab. So having an opposing directions like this will keep that from happening. Keep the bed secure and bolted down to the frame and uh, keep it from moving. So I'm going to get into that. I got to drill holes into the frame, uh, drill holes in the frame and bolt it on. And then, uh, we'll move on to, uh, inside the cab. We got some stuff to do. So I'm going to work on this and, uh, get caught up on it. Well guys, I'm sitting here working on the uh, tail lights. I have the harness coming out of the bed and all the harnesses coming out of the truck and uh, got them all stripped out and uh, exposed there and figuring out which goes to which. And uh, basically all you got to do to do that is a test light. I'm going to hook it up to a ground here. And basically what I do is uh, I leave the what, something running. Right now I have the running lights on and it's brown. And you, you touch all these wires, uh, here's another brown, that's the running lights. And uh, so that's that's the running lights, and how I find it on the harness is I take this, it was kind of obvious, this one's brown, so I just did the, the obvious thing, touch the brown to brown, and you look at the marker lights on the bed, and uh, the marker lights are on. There you can see the marker lights are on. So that's how I do that, same thing with turn signals. Uh, yellow is left turn signal. I think green was right turn signal. Um, and uh, this was reverse. And let's see, on this one, they weren't exactly the same. There was green with orange stripe. That was right turn signal. And this orange with green stripe was left turn signal. And this black with pink was reverse. So, got all that figured out. All I need to do is wire them up. Uh, your brake lights are both of your turn signals on at the same time, so uh, there's not a dedicated brake lights wire. But uh, got all that sorted out, thought I would just kind of fill you in with how I did that. Uh, didn't really film the whole process because I'm here and there jumping around and it's hard to film. And I just got to working on it without the camera going. But So and since I got that uh, all figured out, I thought I would show it to you. So I'm going to get into wiring all this up and uh, then the bed will be finished and installed. Well, I have everything wired up. Have the lights off in the shop here so we can see the lights a little bit better. Let's see how I did. First off, let's try marker lights. Or running lights. Good there. Good back here. We got two over there. We got two over there. So all those are working. Alright. Let's try left turn signal. There we go. Looks like it's working. Yeah, left turn signal. Try right. Yep, it's working. We got our turn signals there. See if brakes work. Yep, brakes are working. Let's go put her in reverse and see if reverse lights work. Hey, we got reverse lights. Looks like it did pretty good. So we have all the lights. I think we have a few on the cab I need to work on. Yeah. We got one out right there. We got one. These are working good. And three cab lights. I knew about the cab lights. I ordered bulbs for the cab lights. I didn't know about this one. Let's see what kind of bulb those side markers take. That one's working. So we have uh, have three lights on the cab I gotta fix in that uh, that marker right there. So not too bad. I'll get to working on those other lights. Um, I'll have to get up some bulbs for those, but uh, now we're we're coming down to uh, I think dash pad. So uh, I think now it's time to work on the dash pad. Okay, first off, to install the dash pad, we have to take out the gauge cluster and take out the glove box liner because there's uh, you got to get access to the bolt holes that are up in here. And uh, right here, and there's one right there, and above the radio and above the glove box and everything. So uh, you have to take those things out to get to get access to those little little bolts or nuts, I guess is what they would be. So uh, I'm going to get after that and uh, see if we can get that dash pad in.
Well guys, dash pad is all installed. I really like the way of a new dash pad in these trucks. It really helps uh, dress up the interior versus one that's all cracked and stuff. Uh, that new dash pad just really makes it nice and crisp and clean in here. Got the gauge cluster back installed, everything back in the glove box. Uh, I dyed this in the previous episode. If you want to see me, the process of dyeing that, check out the first episode on this build series. Uh, but uh, real glad to get that dash pad in there. I've been waiting a long time since we did the windshield, the windshield gasket. So uh, uh, been uh, just been sitting on this for a long time and haven't been able to put it in anything. But since we got that windshield in, I'm, I had to put this thing in. Looks great. I got the cab lights all working. Took a couple of bulbs. This light right here was being finicky, this clearance light. I had to, uh, the inside pin was out of place. I had to get the pin in the right place, and now the bulb works good. And I got all the cab lights working. So now all the lights are working on the truck. So uh, now I need to move on to uh, the interior is all done other than cleaning. I got to do a little bit of cleaning, but I'm going to wait until right before I sell it to do the deep clean on it because then then I won't uh, we're just getting it dirty again uh, engine wise I need to uh, I gotta change the oil got an oil filter here gonna change the oil get some fresh oil in it uh, and uh, I already have fresh spark plugs in it I did that previously uh, new fuel pump I did that previously to get it running the alternator there's a there's a spacer behind the alternator that uh, takes up slack for this bolt back here and it is missing, so uh, I'm going to get get one of those. I have several of those laying around. I'm going to get that uh, spacer, put that spacer in. And it's also a double uh, two-bolt setup, or two-belt setup. And the pulley only has a single belt. So I'm going to try to find a dual alternator pulley and uh, change that out. So we ha I can run two belts on it and probably put new belts on it as I'm doing it, while I'm doing it. But uh, for now, I'm going to change the oil and work. try to find that spacer and work on that spacer. Right here's another reason why I like full drive trucks. For one, the uh, the everything sits up higher. It's easier to get up underneath it, and it doesn't have this cross member under the engine that makes it a pain to get to the drain plug. And uh, Ford decided to put the drain plug right in the cross member, so it gets your cross member all oily. I can get the wrench on it. There we go. This oil runs out directly onto the cross member. There we go. That oil looks still pretty in good shape. I think it was uh, pretty freshly changed. Doesn't have much use on it. It's still bright brown colored. But uh, we'll change it anyway because it's probably way timed out. At least it doesn't have any water in it or anything like that or you know gray emulsified water and oil mixture yeah we'll let that drain and uh, I'll get the oil filter pulled and uh, we'll get some new oil in this thing well guys getting ready to work on the alternator I found a uh, dual belt alternator in my uh, parts stuff my parts uh, spare parts it appears to be good and it has the dual uh, pulley on it, the dual belt pulley. So I'm going to take this one off and put this one on, make sure it's in good shape. And then uh, uh, put two belts on it. I also found a spacer. This is the spacer that's supposed to go behind that bolt and uh, keep everything aligned and straight. This belt squeaks awful bad when you start it up. So I think that might be part of the problem. That alternator is not exactly straight because it's missing this spacer. So I found a spacer. we got to pull the alternator off and... Uh, I'm going to put this one on and hope it works. I think it should. It's in my uh, good parts stuff. I don't remember what it came off of, but uh, I don't put it in the good good parts stuff if it didn't come off of something that worked when I took it off. So we're going to get after that and uh, see if we can get this alternator fixed up.
I got the uh, dual belt alternator installed and that spacer installed. Let's uh, give it a shot and see see if we're charging. Hopefully our alternator gauge still works because I really like that fact about this truck. Yep, alternator gauge works and the alternator's charging. Sweet. And it's not squeaking. It was squeaking on startup. Well, that's good. Another thing marked off the list and taken care of. See, so turn the lights on. Yeah, the alternator gauge flickers when you turn the lights on. Seems to be all working. Well, I have the truck out of the shop here. Uh, I've been doing a few things on it. I put a little bit of a uh, deck stain on the on the uh, bed here. It helped bring back a little bit of the color of the uh, the wood there because it was a little sun bleached. Uh, I think it turned out pretty nice. Just a natural deck stain. It wasn't color or anything. Just a uh, protective finish on it and it brought back some of the wood color on it also got a receiver hitch mounted up back here i thought the uh the back of the bed being right there it looked a little goofy because you can see the bottom of the frame and everything uh, i had this 34 inch receiver hitch so uh i just mounted it up on the frame so i think it makes the back of the truck look a little bit better and plus it makes it usable because you can actually use that hitch to pull a trailer with it so it helps get the bottom of that bed down a little bit and uh gives it a little bit better look so that it doesn't look like the back end so dang high on it and plus you can step to get in the back anyway thought that was pretty neat but the reason i have it pulled up here is because i got the wheels back from paint i already have the tires all mounted up on them these are the fronts and then these are the rears using these uh bf goodrich 750 16 km3s these are actually off the high boy the ultimate high boy before I put the uh, 34 inch KM3s on it, these are the 750 16s. So these are going on the back and I got some just some highway tread tires for the front. So we're gonna, we're gonna get these mounted up and uh, see how she looks. everyone the moment you've all been waiting for and the moment I've certainly been waiting for the dually wheels are all painted on the truck and mounted on the truck and it looks perfect it turned out way better than I expected the uh, the look on this truck is absolutely perfect and uh, the everything I had in my mind turned out exactly how I thought it would in the truck and it, I, I just couldn't have asked for a better result uh, this is gonna be the first truck that I bring to market as far as uh, fixed up and uh, presented and uh, I couldn't be more excited about this one so uh, without further ado let me show you guys how it turned out so here it is. Doesn't that just look great? With the white wheels and the new tires and that bed. The look of this bed just fits this truck perfect. The style I was going for, the look with the wood floor on the bed. In the back end, we got that new receiver hitch on the back. And of course, all the marker lights and uh, the painted wheels, the, the wheels match the body. The body paint, the Wimbledon white paint. This thing turned out way better than I expected. And it looks fantastic. So uh, this thing is, is complete. 
and ready to go. All I need to do now is do some deep cleaning on it. I need to get some uh, uh, some cleaning done in the interior still left to do and a little bit under the hood and uh, some under the truck as well because I'm gonna I'm gonna put the truck on the lift and uh, photograph everything under the truck and all that so I want to get all that a little bit cleaner it's kind of a little dirty just kind of dirt and stuff on it from from over the years under the hood I've already done a lot of cleaning but uh, really it's just it's just all original just the way it was all I did was clean the dirt off I did add a new uh, cow seal and a uh, new window washer bottle and uh, new lines. But uh, other than that, the paint on, on all this is all original, even down to the, the staples on the valve cover, like I've mentioned before. Put new spark plugs in it, but a uh, new fuel pump and change the oil. But she's all ready to go. Like I said, I, I couldn't be happy with the way this turned out. I actually want to keep it really bad, but uh, I'm going to want to keep every single one that I finished. So I can't do that. So this one's going to go to market. I think we're, uh, I think I've settled on a bring a trailer auction. Uh, I have to uh, submit it and hopefully they accept it. And once they accept it, it'll be three to four, maybe five weeks before it goes live. So uh, you guys will know for sure when that happens, I'll be posting a video, an overview video of the truck for the bring a trailer au auction specifically. Uh, but uh, this series of videos I'll, uh, I'll link in the auction as well so people can see how, uh, how I brought this one back. And uh, I just, uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't be happy with the way it turned out. I'm real excited. I can't stop looking at it. I just pulled it out here and uh, stared at it for a while and admired my work. So uh, I guess that's good that whenever you uh, enjoy what you do and uh, it's bad because I don't want to sell it really bad. But I need to sell it to keep things moving and start working on the next one. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching all this series. Thank you for watching all my other videos. And uh, I need to get working on some more trucks so I can get them turned out. But uh, you guys will see this on here. So hit that subscribe button so you know when that happens. Hit the thumbs up if you like this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.